for one of our regular uh, Wednesday workshops, this one about XML Publisher. My name is Hendricks Bodden, and I'm joined by Larry Gray. Uh, Chris Heller may join us later, although he's involved. Uh, we're actually in the middle of implementing our mobile product for a couple of customers. So there's just a brief plug for our, for our mobile. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. The agenda for the day uh, is uh, to, for me to do just a brief company intro, and then I'm going to turn it over to Larry, and Larry's going to get into uh, the details around the subject at hand. So, uh, so yeah, in terms of today's presentation, um, this is actually one of our uh, one of our more popular presentations, uh, as evidenced actually by the number of attendees. I think today is going to be the largest webinar that we'll have ever given in terms of number of attendees for Grace Farley. So definitely want to appreciate uh, all of you for joining us today. Um, so, uh, so I see a few folks that we've that have joined uh, these webinars in the past, and a few new people. Um, and so in terms of today's presentation, uh, what we want to do is have a mix of, of, uh, of topics. And what I mean by that is that um, XML Publisher is, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of interest in it. Um, and, but one of the things that's uh, interesting in terms of how it's deployed with PeopleSoft is it's done a little bit differently than um, how XML Publisher is used for um, other products that Oracle sells. So it's actually a, a reporting engine um, similar to, to Crystal Reports that gets used with the uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite. It gets used with the OBIEE for formatting output um, and, and obviously gets used for PeopleSoft. So we'll be spending about half of the time looking at the PeopleSoft specific side of how it's integrated because um, and I like covering that because that's actually the last thing that I had put in place before I left Oracle was really setting the direction for how that was going to work. Um, our goal was to basically teach Oracle how PeopleSoft did things and kind of the best way, best practices in terms of taking a reporting engine and really, you know, making it easy for people to leverage and adopt and not have to write a lot of code. So we'll talk about some common techniques for developing XML publisher reports. Uh, talk about some practices for building and managing reports. Um, a lot of this, again, is going to be focused on kind of the PeopleSoft side of things, but we will be showing a few things that people had asked us to show the last time we gave this presentation, specifically in the area of leveraging maybe some charting or some, some cross tabs or that sort of thing. The idea here is that um, uh, we're expecting that, you, that, uh, that, that most of you will be somewhat familiar with PeopleSoft, PeopleSoft query and the process scheduler, at least in terms of what it is and what some of the limitations may be. So let's talk uh, first about the XML publisher architecture. Uh, this is one of the things that always uh, repeats, uh, always uh, is important to, to cover because it's a lot different than the architecture of any of the other reporting tools that PeopleSoft delivers. Um, in fact, most of the things that you get with PeopleSoft has a live connection between the reporting tool and the PeopleSoft system. Um, and so XML Publisher is a little bit different in terms of how it works. And it's something to keep in mind as you start looking at some of your best practices. So let's take a look at the architecture. This is a pretty simplified diagram, but it really covers the key aspects that I want to talk about today. So the first is really talking about um, kind of where the access rules are defined. And so uh, one of the best practices that we have, this kind of really comes from the early days of PeopleSoft, is that you know, one of the core uh, principles of PeopleSoft is that it's always better to do something uh, using definitions than to do something writing code. And so the idea here is that as you go through and work on your XML publisher reports, you'd like to have the ability to have the data access rules defined in something other than you know, a, a programming language. So even though there is uh, hooks into um, App Engine to actually generate XML files and you know, push those into XML publisher and that sort of thing, from our perspective today, what we want to do is really focus on the way that you can do it using definitions, things that your end users can have more, you know, participate in more, and not so much your end users, but your power users, as opposed to always having to throw something over the fence to a developer. So the idea here is that your data access rules can be defined with queries, and they can be linked 
together, you can link multiple queries together through connected query, which is a, a, a pretty key piece of functionality that we'll be covering today. And so that's all defined in People Tools, to, you know, basically in you know your your browser pages and stored in the PeopleSoft tables. But then when you're actually designing your reports, you're doing that through a plugin in Microsoft Word. And what that plugin does is it takes a sample um, data file that gets downloaded. So it's not real data; it's just kind of fake and baked data that basically says, "All right." What are all the fields, and what's some you know some some sample data? So anything that's numeric, it basically just puts in one, two, three, four, five. Anything that's not numeric, when it actually sends the data down, it actually puts it in you know uh, something that says sample in the, in in there if it's a text field, you know that sort of thing. And the idea here is that it sends that sample data down, and that's really what you're working with when you're designing your XML publisher reports. Is basically just a sample data file. And then you're kind of going and creating it and creating your sample template. And then at the very end, that gets uploaded into the PeopleSoft tables and gets stored as XML publisher report definitions. And then those get stored there. And then when you actually run an XML publisher report, it actually pulls out of the database the XML publisher report definition and runs it there and actually selects the data using the data source that you've defined, all that sort of thing. Now, one of the things to keep in mind that's actually kind of nice compared to Crystal Reports or SQRs is that PeopleSoft takes care of the deployment of the XML Publisher reports to the Process Scheduler server automatically. So when the Process Scheduler basically says, oh, it wakes up, oh, I have a, a, an XML Publisher report I need to run, do I, you know, and the first thing it does is it pulls out that definition from the database. So you don't have to worry about FTPing the files when you make changes to XML publisher reports, you know, things like that. So that's the that's the important thing from a best practice or from a from an architecture perspective. From a best practices perspective, because you're not running your reports with real data until it gets to the process scheduler, um, there's a lag between what you're doing at design time and what you see at runtime. And so, if you go through and build the Uber report in the template, you know, in the in the uh, you know as a template in Word, and you don't test it until you actually upload it and run it and that sort of thing, you're going to find a lot of issues that, um, and you're going to have to go through and figure out how to find the resolution to those issues. One of the things that we found with some of the reporting that we find in, in XML Publisher is that a lot of times the XML Publisher engine will actually give you a Java error and crash and not really give you a good answer in terms of what's going wrong. And so, uh, and so you can root through it and try to figure all of that out. But the best way to do that is to, is to start small. Create a simple report that just has a couple of pieces in it, send it over, see what it looks like, then do the next piece and add to it, and then keep adding. So, and this is definitely something you're going to want to do when you start looking at the cross-tab reports as well as the um, as the charting. You know, the, when you start incorporating those things in there, those engines are pretty finicky in terms of the data that it gets, what it needs to do. So, you know, those are some things just to keep in mind as we look at the best practices. So let's go through and build a report and go through all of these different steps. So I'm going to jump over to um, to uh, PeopleSoft over here, and um, and I'll just kind of get started with all of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm, now that I'm signed in, I'm going to go to Query and go to Query Manager. And the only reason I'm doing that is because. I have several reports that I've actually gone through and already built. So what we're going to be using today is three queries that we're going to combine together in an XML publisher report. And so the idea of this report is that it's going to get information for each department, route the output to a department manager, um, and um, and then we'll just kind of work from there. So um, so so as my naming convention, I just put. You know, XMLP at the very end, that helps me find the reports that I want to be working with. 
And then I can go through if I want to, and I can actually run this report to HTML, and it'll go through, and this is kind of the data that's actually we're going to be using to work with as we go through and build our XML publisher report. So this is kind of the top query that we're going to be running. It gives me the list of departments, who the managers are, that sort of thing, which is important. Um, the other thing is that um, then it starts listing out who are the employees in those departments, and then what are the actions that are available for those employees. And so the next thing I want to do is combine these three things together into a connected query. And the reason I want to do that is because um, the connected query gives it a hierarchical structure that I can use for my reports. So I don't have to have one single tabular report result that I'm joining the whole world together in order to get it. I can actually have some things that are a little bit smaller and then let the connected query join those together. Uh, one question comes up when we go through and do this, uh, give this webinar, um, and it's actually a, a pretty uh, astute question. You know, can, can you use a connected query in place of an outer join? And the answer to that is definitely. The nice thing about that is that It'll join things together as it finds it. So if I need to get some additional data related to something, um, I can actually create the connected query to have 